Hey everyone, let's go ahead and take a look at our first free response question. So we've got two stats teachers recorded test scores on the district exam that was taken at the end of the course. Both co classes covered the same material. Over the course of the semester, the scores for each of the two classes are shown below. So we've got some data and then we're asked to draw some box plots, compare the socks, and make sure we show the work leading to our outlier calculation. So for me, when I get something like this, the first thing I wanna do is put my data into my lists. And anytime I'm gonna to need to compare socks, it's a good idea to get all of those stats from one var stat. So I'm just gonna start writing out some stats here. So I'll put, I'll, I'll go on this side, I'll do teacher A over here, just so I have teacher A's stats and I will put teacher B's over here. And especially if we're gonna be getting outliers, I'm definitely gonna want the min, Q1, median, Q3, and I will squeeze in the max there. So I'll go get those five, number, five numbers to make my five number summary. And let me write it here, min, Q1, median, Q3, and the max. All right, so now I, uh, ahead of time, I put my data into my list and I'm gonna use the calculator app for this, but it's pretty similar to the physical calculator. So let me head over to my app and you can see that I put my data into my lists, so they are in there in L1 and L2. So let me go ahead and get the stats for L1. Oops, excuse me, let me do stat calc one. Let's put in L1 here. And there are my five numbers. So I see 42, 72, 76.5, 82, and 92. So let me write those on my notes. So my min was, we had 42, 72, I think it was 76.5, 82, and 92. And I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna do it for teacher B, which was over in L2. So let's do stat calc one, and let's plug in L2 this time. So 55, 63.5, 71, 82.5, and 95. Let me go ahead and write those out. So we had 55, 63.5, 71, 82.5, and finally 95. So we had all of that going on. And from there, I think the first thing I'm actually going to do is just, let's go make the safety zones and see if we had any outliers. So for teacher A, let's do this. So the first thing I need to do is find the IQR, which is always Q3 minus Q1. So what do we have here? We have 82 minus 72, that's gonna give me 10. I need to take that number and multiply it by one and a half. So that's gonna be one and a half times 10, which is gonna give me 15. And then I need to take 15, subtract it from Q1, but add it to Q3. And this will build my safety zone. So I'm gonna have 72 minus 15 and 82 plus 15. So if I look at my safety zone, I am looking at 57 to 97. So let's go see um, if I have any outliers. Actually, I know I'm going to have an outlier because I see the lower bound here is 57 and my min was 42. So I definitely have an outlier on the low side. I don't have one on the high side because the upper bound of my safety zone is 97 and my max is only 92. So going through this, I know 42 is a min. Let me see what the next smallest number is. If I'm looking at it, it looks like my next smallest number is 59. 59 is in the safety zone. So from there, I know that 42 is an outlier. And I'm gonna say this is 42 points because those were the units on this. So we've got 42 points is an outlier. All right, and then let's go see what's going on with teacher B. Let's build teacher B's safety zone. All right, so again, IQR. It's Q3 minus Q1, so this time I have 82. Oops, looks like I have a spam message that I need to ignore. I've got 82.5 minus 63.5, and that is gonna give me 19. All right, and when I multiply one and a half times 19, I'm looking at 28.5. And it's okay that I have a decimal, I mean, it's. It's more to write, but it doesn't change the, the actual process. So I'm gonna subtract that number from Q1, add it to Q3. So let's see, my Q1 here was 63.5. I'm gonna subtract 28.5. This was 82.5. I'm gonna add 28.5, and let's see what my safety zone is. It looks like it's 35 and 111. 
All right, so here's my safety zone. Let's see if I have any outliers. All right, so I always check mins and maxes. So if my min was 55, 55 is safe, and my max was 95, 95 is safe. So there's no outliers over here, which is great. Now I know. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is actually build that box plot, or those box plots. So let me shrink this just a bit so we have some space. And all I would need to do is make sure I keep my stats in line. So here we go, let's build the x-axis. All right, so this is going to be, it looks like my ultimate min is 42, my ultimate max is 95. So I will just start this at 40 and we will go 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 80. So we'll go a little bit longer here. What do we got? 85, 90, and then a little bit longer again, and 95. Let me make sure I have that. 45, 50, 55, 60, 70, 75, 80, 85, sweet, 90. And then so I'm going to put score on district exam. And we've got points here. And so let's go, I'll go with teacher A first. So it looks like the min is an outlier. So I'm gonna put teacher A's outlier here. And then it looks like we said the next highest non-outlier, we had 59. And then I had my Q1 at 72, somewhere in there. The median was about 76.5, Q3 was 82 and the max was here at 92, so something like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and box the middle 50%, and I'm gonna whisker out to the ends. All right, let me label that. That would have been teacher A. All right, now let's look at teacher B. There were no outliers. Teacher B is gonna start at 55 with the min, 63.5 for Q1, 71 for the, uh, for the median, 82.5 would be somewhere around here, and then finally 95 would be up here. So if I go to do teacher B, box the middle 50%, whisker out, and let me go ahead and label this one was teacher B. Okay, and so now I, I personally, and this is preference, personal preference, I go ahead and I label these just so folks know where I'm getting my, I like to over label, I want people to know where I'm getting all of my information. And so we'll put 92 here, and this was, what did we have? 55, 63.5, 71, uh, 82.5, and 95. Okay, so now let me see if I've completed all of this. I've drawn my parallel box plots. I've not compared my socks, so let me go ahead and start listing out the socks so I can at least finish this problem out. So if I look at these distributions, both of them are roughly symmetric if I look at them. Teacher A might be a little bit skewed left, and I say that because if we go here at this left half, that spans a lot longer than the right half of the data. So I could see someone saying that teacher A's graph was skewed left, but I'm gonna go ahead and say both are roughly symmetric. We're gonna get pretty liberal as we move through the semester with being roughly symmetric. So I'm gonna put for comparative language, both distributions are roughly symmetric. Okay, all right, and then for outliers, I did have an outlier, right? Only teacher A had an outlier. So teacher A, has an outlier at 42, whereas teacher B has no outliers. All right, and again, there's whereas, that's my comparative language. And then for centers, because I have a box plot, I usually go with the median, so it looks like um, comparing teacher A to teacher B, teacher A has the larger median, so that, that's all I'm gonna say. Teacher A has the larger median. And I wanna point out that I'm not saying something general like teacher A has the larger uh, center. I'm actually using the statistic, right, that vocab term of median. All right, and then, oops, let me go ahead and get out of that. So taking a look at this, if I wanna go into my, uh, my spread, I can use spread, range, standard deviation, variance, things like that. 
So let me go ahead and, and take a look here. I think just looking at it, teacher A has got a longer range, right? I can see that range is 50, where this one is only 40. So I'm just going to say, I'll even phrase it the other way. I'll say teacher B has a smaller range. All right, and then if we look, I have comparative language going through there, okay? Um, which class appears to have the higher scores? Justify your answer using an appropriate statistic. Okay, so I need to quote a stat here. So taking a look at it, I, I could. there's gonna be multiple answers here, but the stat I'm gonna opt for, and I'll change color pen colors on this, I'm gonna use the median because I, I look at the middle there, and the middle for teacher A, or the median, was higher, right, 76.5 versus 71 on teacher B. So I, I could justify it that way um, and using the median as a statistic. You could, um, you could justify it with, I'm trying to think of other ones. You could use Q1 because the Q1 here for teacher A is larger than the Q1 for teacher B. If you want to go the other way, if you use the max, you could justify teacher B. You could actually say, well, teacher B had to have the highest overall score, but I'm going to use the median. So I'm going to say that teacher A's class appears to have the higher scores. Oops. All right, as they have the higher median. All right, and I, I'll just put in parentheses it was what, 76, I guess that technically 76.5 versus 71. All right. So that's how I chose to do it. Again, you could have used, I could have justified it with like the IQR, Q1. If you had gone the other way and you wanted to say teacher B had the higher scores, you could have used the max. So just quote one of those statistics. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.